What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of the Real Housewives of Potomac. So this is season four, episode four, the wig easy. Okay, now um. Everybody is still coming off of what happened the night before, okay? Last week, they showed us the party, showed us some stuff that was said. You know, um, Robin, she talking about it, but she don't really want to say nothing to Ashley about what her man said about sucking somebody dick, okay? We don't know exactly which person dick that he said he wanted to suck, but he said he wanted to suck a penis, all right? Um, she don't know if Candace remember what was said, but she not finna bring it up. Candace, on the other hand, she know what was said, and she said the person name. She said, "Well, she said she wanted he wanted to suck bleak's bleak, okay, and so therefore she know who he was, and it's like, uh oh. But given that she's a newlywed, she don't want to bring up no drama, or whatever. So she just gonna let it go. Everybody's nursing hangovers and stuff like that. I said, you know, y'all good, y'all better than me." Okay, and they working on their relationships with the girls, so I guess that's why they trying to, you know, keep it cute or whatever. But, bitch, they gonna keep that shit in their back pocket so that they can spring it out. Beep! And your man over here trying to suck niggas' dicks and shit like that, so what the fuck? You know, that would have been me, but okay. Moving on from there, we got Giselle. Um, she's doing her little journaling. You know, she said she started journaling when she was married, but she never really kept up with it. And so she's starting back doing it because it was an assignment that, you know, her therapist told her to do. Um, you know, she's trying to get the girls together. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Excuse me. She wants to get the girls together so that she can go down to um new orleans so for her father's 80th birthday or 90th 80th birthday okay and you know you got her daughters up there just you know laughing and giggling and stuff and then they come down and um she tells them about sherman and how you know they're no longer together and they were like well you know you need to get married because when you were a man or whatever you're all nice and stuff like that and you're not hollering at us and you know and i love the fact i love the fact I love the fact that Giselle said, I want to put it out there that and show my girls you don't need a man to make you happy and to get through life or whatever. And I was like, that's a good, that's a good thing to put out there. Yes. You know, um, don't equate happiness to being with just a man. And that's the reason why you're happy and stuff like that. So that was that. And then, you know, she telling them about how she invited the girls and, you know, she's trying to get more in contact with her roots and how she used to go to New Orleans every summer. And they showed that picture of her when Giselle was nine years old. I said, look at little little Giselle. Okay. She looked like her daughter, Grace, and her daughter, Grace looked like her father. I said, twins, 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 triplets right there. All right. But, um, you know, she said she wasn't born in New Orleans, but her parents are from New Orleans and that's where, you know, she spent a lot of her time met and she said when she was in New Orleans and given the culture and everything that's where she feels at home at and so she wanted to go down there she's taking the um the girls um you know everybody she invited everybody including Katie and Karen you know to New Orleans want to go to the Whitney plantation and I've heard about that plantation she said that's the plantation where you know her family was um slaves at and you know she just trying to get some more information i love when people do shit like this okay because i want to do something like that too i love history bitch you know i don't give a fuck how much you annoy me but i like this part i like this part moving on from that we got karen she's going to the dentist she didn't want to go by herself because she's afraid of needles so candace come down and you know um, just being a support system for her they go back there you know and Candace basically was saying how Karen is like a mother figure, almost like the mother that she wanted or what the way that she would like her mother to act or, you know, be easy to talk to just like Karen. So that's why they get along and they got their little quirks and stuff with each other, but they kind of mesh well. And, you know, Karen was doing the absolute most about it. I was looking at this and it was just, I said, first of all, you just getting your crown fixed. You getting your crown fixed. Baby, when they gave me that, I thought they was going to drug me up just like that. They gave her nitrates or what was it, nitrate or whatever the fuck it is. Nitrous. There you go. They gave her that, Um, put it all on. I thought they was going to do that to me when I got my root canal. Bitch, hell no. Nah, they just numb my ass up. Okay? I was awake through the whole thing, you know. Um, 
Karen was high as hell afterwards, okay? She couldn't feel shit. She was doing all, doing the most. Ah, you know, seeing through it, girl. Seeing through it. I would have been like, girl, shut the fuck up, okay? But they was doing that shit for the camera. Bitch, it reminded me of them um, videos that I be seeing on Facebook. These grown-ass people be scared of needles and shit. That is a real fit. If you are scared of needles, put it down in the comments. What is it about the needles that scare you? I've always wanted... I asked that on Twitter once before, and I got various answers. I want y'all to put y'all um and put down. And you know, um, Candace was like, since you're going to New Orleans because Giselle, you know, she asked her, she called her up earlier that day, you know, asked her about it. And it was like, this may be a good time for you to work on your relationship with Ashley and all that stuff. She said, Who is Ashley? I don't know her. I said, All right, Mariah. <laughs> So, you know, Ashley is at the crib, you know, with Michael. He's on his little stationary bike. Speaking of which, I need to go get on mine when I finish this. Anyway, um, yeah. He like, it's 80 degrees outside. Why the hell am I doing this inside instead of being outside? Whatever. Okay. But basically, you know, Katie's still on Ashley. Ashley's still on this whole thing about, you know, being, um, you know, trying to get pregnant and all this stuff. Even though she drinks and everything now, again. And so, um, she's thinking now that Karen is going to be, Karen and Monique is going to be at New Orleans. They have no choice but to talk to her. And at this point, um, they really don't, they can avoid your ass too. She was like, they was trying to avoid me like on the bubonic plague. Bitch, you know, after all the shit that you've done, come on now, what do you expect? All right. It ain't the time, it ain't the place. And if they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to talk to you. Let that shit go. Like right now, you, if you're not finna come to them and apologize for the shit that you said, and then give them the way to apologize for what they said, because you set this shit off then, therefore, there's nothing to talk about, okay? Moving on from that, um, you got Candace. She calls her mom up, uh, FaceTiming her, and basically trying to get some boundaries set. And she, her whole thing is, every time we get into an argument, you always threatening to, you know, like you're going to sell the condo or whatever. And I get where Candace is coming from. It's frustrating. You know, what made me mad was when Candace started crying about the relationship between her and her mom. And you can tell that, you know, she's frustrated about it. I would be frustrated too. But Candace, you have to understand the fact that you are living literally under her roof, okay? And if you want all this stuff to stop, I know you said that you and Chris are saving for your home and all this stuff. Well, you need to probably just up that and just go find something else right now so that you won't have to deal with the pressure of your mama and the anxiety of your mama threatening you every time she get mad because you know how your mama is. Your mama is a petty, miserable bitch, okay? That's what she is, okay? But you are also dependent on this petty, miserable bitch, okay? And I usually don't call people mamas out their name like that, but she deserves everything that I'm saying. And she's using her power that she has over you against you, okay? That is what she's doing. And you are allowing it. Every day that you stay in her condo, every day, I don't care if you're splitting the rent three ways, the mortgage three ways or whatever. Every day that you stay in something that has her name on it, every time that you use something that has her name on it, every time you take any type of money or supplements from her, She's going to use that against you. And that's the power that keeps her into your in her grasp, keeps you in her grasp and let her do and say the things that she say to you. Yes, she is your mother. You're supposed to have respect, but you do supposed to have respect for your own child too. She don't have respect for you because she don't see you as an adult no more. She probably never has because you always, she still has to take care of you like a fucking kid. Okay. And so therefore she's going to treat you like one. And that's exactly what it is. You see the relationship that you have with Karen but Karen is not taking care of you okay your mother is helping take care of you and that's why she's treating you the way that she's treating you she hung up on her ass okay and I get it the mama made me mad when I was about to say she made me mad when she um Candy started crying and she gonna tell her you're married now stop crying so the fuck what bitch so she, just because she get married she ain't supposed to cry girl shut the fuck up with that bullshit Candace you want this stuff to stop get out there you go so Robin is trying to get her um closet together. Some people are supposed to be there to do something with it. And basically, I don't care about her stuff. You know, why I told her, don't get your ass drunk, okay? Because, you know, drunk you is not cute and it is what it is. They going down to New Orleans. She said, you know, people do things for new, um, when they drunk for bees and stuff like that. Bitch, bitch, next year. Just remind me. <sighs> 
girl, some stuff might be popping off next year, next summer. So, you know, y'all be on the lookout for that. Um, <laughs> I can't wait till I can actually say it. But uh, anyway, but um, moving on from that, you know, that was just basically it. Who cares? So, you know, um, Karen meets up with Giselle. She's at Ubiquitous. And this is the place where they was going to last year that looked like a, um, you know, Women's Black Expo. You know, just um, empowerment and certain businesses and stuff and, you know, where entrepreneurs go. Okay. And this is when um, Karen and uh, Monique wasn't really feeling Giselle. They was trying to avoid her and being shady and all that stuff. And so now, Karen and, you know, Giselle, their friendship is still kind of rocky, but Karen does admit she missed her friend, but, you know, she's, they're in an okay place. So now she's trying to put forth the effort to make it seem as if she's trying to support she's going to be somewhat there for her or whatever and um you know Giselle is there to work on her um every hue um you know foundation makeup stuff and also to show her daughters because it struck a nerve with her when her daughters told her that you know she seemed more happy when she was with a man and she was like you know I'm just trying to show them this entrepreneur side of me and this business and all this stuff and how you can make yourself happy and things of that such and you don't need to you know depend on another person to make you happy especially a man that's what Giselle is coming from okay um you know Karen pops up they having this little conversation, chit chat, all this stuff. Then the lady who's ahead of Ubiquitous, you know, helping out, she comes over there. She's um talking to Karen about the stuff. Giselle kind of set it up so that they can um you know make leeway into what Karen's doing with her fragrance. And you know, she said she's what's your price point? She was like, "Well, I'm so glad that you asked me. It's gonna be seventy nine ninety nine, and then for the roll on, it's gonna be nineteen ninety nine, and then you know I'm going into candles, doing sheets and stuff. So it's gonna be like the house of Karen." She was like, "Wait a minute, bitch." Wait a minute. She was like, Giselle, no. Giselle said, wait a minute. Fuck, fuck, first of fucking all, I'm confused as shit. You didn't tell me a damn thing, okay? Now, we've been asking you and asking you, and you ain't said nothing, but you can tell a complete stranger everything that's going on. You fucked that up, Giselle. You fucked that up. Maybe she wanted, she could have told you last year, but you kind of, you know... You messed that up. So, therefore, this is why your relationship is where it is. It's not fucked up. And it's not Karen keeping stuff from you. She just don't trust you at this point. Okay? She still hurt from the shit that you did to her last year. Now, had you not did what you did last year, you would have known about all this stuff. I'm pretty sure of it. So, you know, you just have yourself to blame at this point. And sometimes people like to keep stuff on the hush-hush until it's official. And then she'll come out and say what it is. But, hey, it is what it is. Karen, you got, um, both of them kind of fucked up. But, Giselle, you got to look at yourself, too, you know. So, everybody is getting ready for, um, getting ready to go meet up with Giselle. Giselle, um, meets up with Katie. Not Katie. Oh, what's that girl name? Ashley. I keep on getting they confused because they both, <sighs> yeah. So, um, Giselle done lost her voice from being a ubiquitous and, um, she's still trying to get everything together. Karen shows up. She wants some braids in her hair and, um, Monique was like, oh my God, we got the same hair. She was like, the only difference is my hair is braided to my head. Karen just braided her wig. I said, girl, <laughs> stop. But, um, when they see, Ka uh, uh, Ashley, Ashley was like, hey y'all, hey y'all. And then they was like, hello, and kept on going. And then they both said, in both of their confessional, Monique was like, I mean, saying hello was like air, you know. And Karen said saying hello was free. So, it is what it is. So, they both was just saying what, you know, basically said the same thing. Um, Katie comes on, on the thing, and next thing you know, she gives a hug to Karen. They, and her earring get caught up in her hair. Karen's like, when Katie is on, she's on. When she's off, the bitch is off, okay? You know, so you just never know what you're going to get with her. Then... Um, they trying to call Robin. Robin is late as shit, okay? Robin was late to the girl's wedding. Robin was just late to everything else, the last trip, you know? And so, at this point, she gonna have to meet them at the airport. This two hours until the plane leaves, and she is still trying to pack her bag. She hasn't answered her phone. Giselle had to leave a message and say, y'all, you just gonna have to meet us at the airport, um, you know, Giselle and Monique, they're in a good place so far. You know, Giselle, you know, um, personally called FaceTime Monique and asked her to come. And, um, they, they cool for what right now. She asked him when is her due date because Monique was a little uncomfortable sitting there for as long as she's been. And, um, she was like, she's due December 3rd. I think Giselle said that's her brother's birthday. You know, somebody's birthday. 
And so that, you know, she was started talking about how, um, she was asking her about her doctor and then, you know, Candace started talking about whether or not she's ready for babies. And, you know, Giselle was saying, I see you ready for them in a couple of years. And, you know, she was like, I just can't stand people's kids. It was like, that's, that's true. You can't stand other people's kids, but you will change when you get your own and all that stuff. And she was like, oh my God, I need a therapy session. And it was like, what? Here you go, Ashley. What about your mama from your mama? And it was like, girl, shut up. And that's the thing. Ashley, you want people to be cool with you, but yeah, you say, and I know these girls say shady shit, but Ashley say shady shit and expect people not to remember and and, 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 and want to understand why people won't talk to them like Monique and stuff like that. But you're supposed to be trying to develop a relationship with this girl and you saying shady shits about her and you always, you know, want to throw the fact that she's living with her mom or got her mom doing this and that in the confessional. But like Candace said, bitch, um, it's a whole bunch of shit going on in your marriage as well, and she got the tea on that, so if I was you, I'd hush the fuck up, that's what you need to do, okay, but Giselle, she also is feeling some type of way because of the fact that, you know, um, what happened in Ubiquitous with, um, Karen, and I said, girl, just let it go, let it go, okay, you're not gonna know everything, and especially when you fuck shit up, you're not gonna know everything, just let it go for right now, Focus on the fact, the reason why y'all going down to New Orleans. She said, we got a dress. We, we got some rules, you know. Um, we're going to go to these events. No whining. And it's mandatory that you go out at night, okay? And that's just it. So the girls make it to New Orleans. Robin gets on the plane just in time before, um, one minute before they close the gate, okay? Um, so they get there. Katie having issues in the airport, dropping her stuff. Um, they finally get to the hotel and Giselle offers to let Katie stay in her presidential suite with her. Um, all the girls are calling their husbands and, you know, uh, when Robin was on that phone with Juan and she said, I love you. Juan took forever to say, I love you back. I said, mm. He ain't want to say that shit at all, okay? That, that, that was the truth. That was the truth, okay? That conversation between Karen and um, Ray, what's going on, my African queen? Oh, look at your braids. You know, I see, I told you, I tried to get you to do the afro. You keep it up, I might get you to see the afro later. I said, you know what? <laughs> Karen and Ray, okay, that's cute. Um... But Candace go over there to Monique's play, uh, um, you know, her suite. And, you know, they're just talking about the fact that Candace feels some type of way that she couldn't get in touch with Chris. She was like, maybe he's a workaholic, you know, because he's a workaholic. Maybe he's just working and that's why she can't get in contact with him. She feels a way about the fact that she had to go, that this trip came up so quickly right after her being married. And I'm like, why do you keep on? Candace be making herself feel guilty about a lot of stuff that she don't need to feel guilty about you're not allowed to have um fun still yes you're still in the honeymoon phase i mean it's just a few days you ain't going on your uh on your honeymoon yet okay but like you said your husband likes to work okay and so it is what it is go ahead enjoy yourself come back and you know cater to him let him cater to you do all that stuff you're still going to be married you're still going to be in the honeymoon phase it is what it is don't make too much of a big deal out of it and so at this point you know, you had um, Robin and Giselle outside. They looking at Katie. Katie just in her own world smoking a cigarette outside or whatever. But back up in Monique's room, you know, they're talking about the whole thing. Ken just had to tell her that, you know, uh, Giselle gave Katie her room and all that stuff. And she was like, you know, the first time I met Katie, she was so prim and proper. And now she's all, you know, like Ashley on steroids, all, you know, um, free spirited and I'm gonna start give us free stuff and I was like what what Candace was like oh, maybe you shouldn't have said that you know but Monique said she's gonna keep all her shade to herself I said please do so Giselle took the girls to this cooking class um showed them how to do crawfish Okay, you know, I needed to see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I love me some seafood, but I ain't never had crawfish. And you want to know why? Because I don't want to touch it. <laughs> I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch stuff with legs and, you know, eyes and stuff like that. Bitch, no. Take it out and just give me the meat to eat. You know what I'm saying? I want to suck on shit. I don't suck shit, bitch. That ain't my ministry, okay? No. But, you know, when I go down to New Orleans, I'm going um, I'm going to suck the shit up. <laughs> that 
No pun intended. I'm going to suck it up and I'm just going to handle what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Stop being a little bitch ass. But um, anyway, they did that. Um, Made some crepes. Made some alligator. I had alligator before. I had fried alligator before. It was good. It's good. I won't eat it again. No, nah, let me stop. I will not I will not if it was offered to me, I wouldn't say no, but I wouldn't willingly be like, oh, let me go get some alligator. No. Nah. But um, anyway, I was at the state fair when they had it. You know, at the state fair, they had everything. But um, anyway, moving on from that, they do all this stuff. They having a good time. And then Giselle takes it upon herself to bring up the fact that she feels as though, are we really friends to Karen? Because I introduce you to this lady. You tell her about everything that's going on with your um business but yeah i've been asking you for two years and all this stuff and i'm just sitting here like wrong fucking time why bring it up at a nice moment like this and then why if you have an issue with karen bring it to the group i was with karen when she said you brought it to the fucking group what are you trying to do you trying to get people on your side you already know robin is going to be on your side because as soon as karen left she was like she just don't get it she don't get it shut up robin you don't get it all right you expect this lady to want to have you involved in every aspect of her life right about now when she said it's a business she don't have to tell you everything that's going on in her business you know it's for her business integrity it's for it's called confidentiality she don't know if you're gonna take her idea and try to incorporate it in your idea or whatever but at this point y'all were not friends like that you fucked that relationship up so therefore she's guarded okay and it's gonna take more than a trip to fucking new orleans and you know taking me over there to your damn booth at a um fair um ubiquitous fair or whatever and having somebody come over and talk and all this stuff something karen could have did herself so, you know, she got connections too. Okay, it's going to take more than what you're doing and it's going to take time. That's what Giselle don't understand and it was making me mad. Like, girl, calm the fuck down. And you don't don't mess up your trip by bringing up the bullshit. Wait till you go back home and you can sit down and talk with Karen one-on-one -on -one so that y'all can thoroughly talk it out, okay? Don't have nobody else in putting their um in opinions in it. And I said, girl, wrong place, wrong time. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.